In this video we visit a Dutch koi hobbyist. And not just an average one, but a hobbyist that really has a passion for koi. With multiple koi ponds and someone that is focusing on participating on koi shows as well. We will have a look at some of the koi ponds that are in this garden, the koi that are in there, and also how the filtration setup is working for some of the ponds. Just get yourself a drink, sit back and enjoy watching this video. And if you have any questions regarding this video or anything else related to the Koi Hobby, I invite you to give a comment below this video. And when looking at the Koi, I was really amazed by the quality that this hobbyist has in his backyard pond. And just so you know, I had to cut out some of the talking in this video. We both were very enthusiastic and kept talking about the Koi. I made sure though that I speak and explain to you during this video what is happening. It was actually really too bad that there was a cover over the pond, which makes it a little bit more difficult to spot all the great koi that are in here. And of course also here I brought some mealworms for this hobbyist. That he actually is trying now for the first time. And as you can see the biggest koi in this pond, the Korachi Goi, I think it was about 95 cm, loves them. And I bet this is not the last time that he is getting mealworms for lunch. But if you look at the koi, look for example at this Showa, we have Kogan, Oshiba, Tansho Goshki, really nice, Oshiba Shigur with a Maruten Dot, Deutsch Showa, a nice Kindai Showa, there are really beautiful koi in here. This is the biggest Karashi Goi, 1995 cm. The very nice Deutsch Showa that is passing by now, I think the breeder was Shinoda, beautiful as well. Time show show on the bottom. But let's take a look first at the filtration setup of this koi pond. It consists of many koi, probably above 60, and I was not even able to count them all. And with that many koi, it really means you need to have some proper setup for your filtration, else the base weather values will really get worse over time. You will get ammonia, you will get spikes in the nitrates, for example, and that really will cause some some problems. One more fish that I want to show to you is this Ginring Goshki. It's really good quality. The red is really intensive, really deep red. And the darker scales over the skin are also very nice. And the Ginring is really deep. I'm quite sure if this koi is going to participate in a koi show that it will get a prize. But now time to look at the filtration. So we have a bottom drain and one drain on the side of the pond. Then it goes to this huge filter and it is a big vortex filter filled with a lot of filter brushes used as a first layer of mechanical filtration to keep fish waste out and then what you see here is both the bottom drain and the drain on the side of the pond uh, both can be controlled via the valves to, to determine the inflow and then from this filter of course we go to the biological filtration and the biological filtration consists of two filters the first filter is this trickle filter and the other filter that we have is at the other side and that is a big green chamber filter filled with a lot of different filter mediums but that is also needed of course if you want to keep 60 koi in a single koi pond of about 25,000 liters and at the end of the filter we have the bio uv that you see here and then it returns back to the pond and it all starts with moving bed filters. And the main filtration in this pond, or for this pond, is moving bed filters. With helix filter minimum. So with one compartment with moving bed. And then we have this one, also full of moving bed filtration. A lot of air in here as well. And that can really eat a lot of ammonia. This is made by... The owner is now explaining that the filter is 1 meter wide and 80 cm deep. So that means that like one of these compartments, I estimate it already is like 400 or 500 liters. It's really, really big filter. But that's of course what you will need if you have 60 koi in a pond like this. And then this chamber is filled with Japanese stones, as how the owner called them. 
and I think it is like a rock medium and then on the last chamber we have Japanese mats but there is a lot more this is one of the smaller growing ponds for small tosai and the filtration system is also very very big if you compare it to the pond it is just as big as the pond itself so we have in the first compartment we have filter brushes followed by Japanese mats then followed by a moving bed filter with helix filter medium and in the last compartment is Ciporax Ciporax is a filter medium that is also used a lot for aquariums in smaller proportions and it's a really really good filter medium if you ask me and when the water is returning to the pond all the water needs to pass first via this trickle filter and then it returns to the pond and in that grow out pond are really really some nice dosa this is another pond, also for growing out smaller tosai, feeding some mealworms here as well. And if you look at that small shisui, that's really, really a nice koi. Hopefully that will grow big and then it will also join the other bigger koi in the big koi pond. And there is even more koi ponds in this garden. This is the one in the back of the garden that contains mainly tosai and nisai. And I think the sizes here range from about 20 centimeters up to 40 centimeters. So these are the younger koi that still need to grow out a little bit. And also here are very nice koi. 